Namaste. Hi, I'm Bruce Benefiel, and welcome to One World. Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of One World. Namaste is a Sanskrit term which simply means the divine within me recognizes the divine within you. Something that we all can use and recognize in each other in this world today. This evening's guest is Willie Whitefeather. He's a good friend of mine, and he's of mixed blood. He is an author. He's got a couple of different books out that are really some interesting uh, exposés of what we have been experiencing as a human race. And he's also written an outdoor survival book for children, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, and we'll also give you an 800 number to call just in case you'd like to check out the book. Willie, thanks for coming. I really, uh, I'm enjoying your presence here. Thank You've got a lot to tell us this evening. Good to see you. Yeah, I always, you know, when I talk and I speak, I say, don't believe it. Uh, because I don't want to impose anything that I see on anybody because everybody's got their own belief. And then uh, you go along with that belief for a while and then maybe it ain't working, you know. And, you gotta change and then it. you jump onto another belief, you know, and that's the way this society is. Um, I belong to a small band of uh, mixed blood Cherokees. We had something good. The common denominator was our blood. My father's side has Cherokee blood. My mother was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, in Cherokee, when you say, you say, and so I said, hello there, Cherokee Indian, how you doing, you see? Uh -huh. And so uh, the Cherokee were called the Salaki Anayunwiya, the people principle of the seven-pointed star, you see? And so the seven stars was our teacher and taught the people how to get along together because when they go across the sky, they're all together. And that's the Pleiades, right? Yeah, you know, and they, we have seven openings in our head, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, you can look and see and smell, you know. Now, what prompted you to, to get involved with what you're doing now? You're lecturing to, to kids all over the place. You've written the books. Yeah. You, what got you, you started? Uh, see that book, what the title is of that book? That book is written. I wrote that book. I didn't write that book for no money. I wrote that book for my grandkids because my grandkids, I got 30 grandkids. And my grandkid, one of them, three months old, looked me in the eye with no words and said, do something. Well, that look went through me like an arrow. Sure. And so... Uh, in, in Cherokee, you're not grown up until you're 51. So I'm five years old. <laughs> and uh, I owe it to them kids to do what I can. So when I kick the bucket, those kids have got clean water, clean air, and no fear. And good food with no chemicals that will hurt them. And we owe it to them kids. That's right. Speaking of the fears, what, what kinds of fears have you encountered along the way to, to get you where you're at? Well, I, I, had, I lived in a teepee now for the last six years. And I had a rattlesnake come in, move in, live with me. Now, and he was one of my teachers, you know. Now, if you get too close, he tapped me. But if uh, he'd go out and he'd come back in and he'd have a bulge in the middle, he'd have a rat or a mouse or a little mm -hmm. rabbit or something or a baby squirrel, he'd, and then he'd digest that for a while, you know. Now, he was my teacher. He was like a paraplegic. He didn't have no arms and no legs. So I looked at him, I said, what's the big scare about you? All you got is a set of teeth, you know. Well... He'd warn you. 
Man is not as nice as that snake. A guy will walk in and go, this pick up. Bang. Or just bang. No warning. Mm -hmm. And you watch a lot of TV shows. Guys, bang, bang, bang. That snake at least goes, then it hits you. Man don't have a rattle in one hand and a gun in the other. He just go bang. He's nicer than some men. So how, how did those, these fears, what, what did you experience or what did well, you find out about them? Well, I'll tell you, fear is nothing but F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real, or free every anxious reaction. I'll tell you how they do. See, they knew you was coming, Bruce. They knew you was coming, and what they did is they're going to tell you, you're going to be afraid all the time. You're never going to make it. You're never going to put it together. Anytime you're comfortable, you're going to fall down. Anything you get, you're going to lose. You're going to be a loser all your life, and you'll never be king or president or anything. And them stories come over on that boat. And they went like this. Jack and Jill went up a hill. Jack fell down, broke his crown. Jill fell down, spilled the water. You ain't never going to get it. That's what we're taught. Humpty Dumpty, that egg set on the wall. That sucker broke. The horses and men couldn't repair that egg. That's frustration. A horse has hoofs. Impossible to repair a broken egg. Stress. Here it goes. rock a bye baby in the treetop. Ain't that nice? Uh -huh. When the wind blows, down you come. That's not nice. No. Humpty, uh, little Miss Muffet. I know people that have their morning coffee, and while you're having your morning coffee, all you need is a tarantula walking by on the table. That ruins your day, don't it? <laughs> and so little Miss Muffet, ah, interesting, the spider's really. scared, you see? And it was the Lone Ranger in Tonto, Lone Ranger in Spanish, it, que mas sabe, que mas sabe. Mm -hmm. Que mas sabe in Spanish means he knows everything, and Tonto in Spanish means stupid. So it's a game. Today, the, they're playing a new game on the children, because that movie Star Wars was a Cherokee movie. Mm -hmm. And they say, kids, don't take drugs. There's an old Indian game called Make a Smoke Screen in the North, Attack in the South. So the leader of this country comes on and says, kids, don't take drugs. Okay, but on the back bumper of them automobiles is bumper stickers, and I can show them to you. I got them. They've got four-letter words that you can't say on TV, and it says, life is uh, be with a, you uh -huh. know. And, and now a little kid... You're taking a six-year-old kid to go to the store to get an ice cream cone, and that kid sees that life ain't worth living, and then you die. Explain it to a six-year-old kid. Now, offer him drug. Yeah, why not? If the grown-ups feel that way, why don't I just go ahead and take drugs? Yeah, if the grown-ups are all running around killing themselves, what, what does it make any difference to me? You know what I tell my grandkids? I say, you kids, when you see them bumper stickers, you go up to that grown-up and you say, hey, mister, or ma'am, Excuse me, that's a dashboard sticker. That's not a bumper sticker. That's how you look at life. I'm a little kid, and i got a long way to go yet. Could you please take that off and put it on your dashboard? You look at it. There you because go. we don't, you see, that's the same Jack and Jill stuff. And so it was a ragtag bunch of Jedis, and Jedi is J-E-D-I, just every day do it. And so... I had an acquaintance with a Tlingit. Now, Tlingit means the people, same as Salaki. Salaki means the people, the Dene, the Navajo. All the tribes mean the people. Mm -hmm. And so, when he was little, he was being trained for a chief. Now, in the Tlingit, look at this knowledge and this beauty of this. The uncle always does the punishing. Your father never punishes you because that way your father always walks tall in your eyes. Your uncle's going to get you for that. Your uncle's going to get you. And here comes uncle, see? And uncle's got a switch. Well, they'd run that little, little uh, boy naked on the beach in the snow in Alaska, that Tlingit tribe. And that little boy's being trained for a chief. And uncle's coming after him with a switch. And he run, and you know, and uncle come with a switch. And that makes you strong. Even the Hopi, when I was with grandfather, when he was little, the father take, or the uncle take him out and throws him in the snow in the winter. And he'll run home. And in the summertime, they take and throw the baby out in the ice water. That makes you strong. Yeah. So you be strong, okay? Now, I work as a river guy, and I tell everybody, jump in the river, make you strong, make friends with the water, because if you fall out of that boat while we're going down that river, you're going to fall into a stranger. 
Make friends with the waters. Get you strong. People, they go, eh, eh, that's fear. See, eh, eh, that's fear. Now, how do you see that and fitting in with a common human experience or, around you? How do you see people addressing those fears? All right, now, after they run him on the beach with a switch, came time when he was 14. At 14 is the transition. Mm -hmm. He'd done his vision quest, set out for four days, and uh, to find what his purpose is in life. That eliminates fear. Grandfather sits a, a distance off. Grandmother had made him a blanket. In some tribes, grandmother takes and cuts 100 pieces of skin from her arm and puts them in the sun and dries them. And when they're dry, she puts them in a rattle. And that's your rattle for the rest of your life. That's how much she loves you. Wow. And that sh sh that's your rattle. And he got his rattle. That's your strength. Your tribe is your strength. Mm -hmm. When you have 100 people who love and care for one another, you have the mind of one. That's right. That's right. Okay, now, do, do you find, to, yeah. do you find that with the disjointed realities of, of different people now that it's hard for them to work together as one, to have the understanding that they are family? <clears throat> I feel that I'm, I'm going to answer that and show you what I feel about that. Um, You've got a number of things there that how you're probably... You have to first find your inner strength. See, the sign of the right. Cherokee Nation is a seven-pointed star. Mm -hmm. When they smoke the pipe, the, you turn it, the first is to the Creator. He smokes first, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you reverse it and you touch Mother Earth. That's two. Right. Okay, one, two. And then you honor the four directions. And then, that's, that's six, that's huh? Six. Where's the seventh direction? In here. In there. And so that's the inner G. You see, G is a Mayan, came from, the, from a, a, a Mayan symbol, G, mm -hmm. inner G, inner G. And so the signs are like so. Anyway, I share this with you. So when it came time for him to be a chief, he sat there and, and here come uncle who had been doing the punishing all this time and he had made him a, brand, a quiver, a nice leather quiver with a bo brand new bow and arrows, all handmade, hand beaded quiver. Oh, and he says, I wanted to run up and throw my arms around uncle, you know, and say, thank you uncle, you know. But no, I had to sit there, you know, and my uncle presented these things to me. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm -hmm, thank you uncle. Well, after the ceremony was over, he had the bow and arrow and the quiver, and he's walking back down the trail back to his lodge, and his aunt came out from behind a tree, and she said, do you like your new bow and arrows? Oh, yes, auntie, I like them very much. And she said, always remember, never, never shoot an arrow at your own shadow. Now, what that means is when you're a kid, the other kids say, you bonehead, you dummy, you idiot, you stupid, and you get it from everybody, see? Yeah. And after a while, those bumper stickers, that Jack and Jill, all them loser stories, you buy into it. And you go, yeah, yeah, maybe I am a loser. And that's why, Bruce, tonight there are guys sitting in bars, sleeping in the gutter, that have lost their self-esteem and say, yeah, the world's a big mess and they're not doing a doggone thing for the kids. Mm -hmm. You never, never shoot an arrow at your own shadow. So if people call you that, you never put yourself down. What people think about you is none of your business. When you go down the river, now I'm going to show you a river picture. Can I show you a river picture? Okay. And we'll it don't matter what here. color, because a long time ago, I'm going to show you this before I show you the river picture, the okay. Cherokee received, received a gift. And when the people come over on that boat, they never seen this before. And this was the gift. How's them camera folks? They're How are you doing? Fine. Can you get this? Now, they never seen this before, because the Cherokee speak Iroquois. 
There's no R sound in Salaki. They say, oh, see, okay, sit down, Salaki, and the hits it. Uh, you see, and I didn't move my lips, you know, where it came from over there, over there, see. So this is air coin, air coin. So Cherokee speak air coin, you see, and it's round, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. round. When you eat coin, you go, ang, 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 like that. What goes around comes around. Okay, some people eat like a typewriter, ang, 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 like that, so back and forth, huh? But it's a circle. And it's got red, white, black, and yellow kernels on it. Red man, white man, black man, yellow man. They all live together. And when the corn giver came, you can open the corn and you can still see the strands of her golden hair. Mm -hmm. And that's why the sun is female into the Cherokee because her face was as bright as the sun. And so the Hopi people took the littlest corn, you see. And what do they teach us? Don't they plant a, a field of corn down below, a field up there on that mesa, a field down there on that mesa down below, another field of corn down in that valley? With no irrigation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And they pray for the rain, trusting that, it's, that it will come. That's right, Bruce, because they have a song. And we have yellow clouds at sunrise, white clouds at midday, black clouds at storming, and red clouds at sunset. And those are the cloud brothers. And so they got a song to bring in the clouds and a song to open the clouds. That field didn't get enough rain. That field got too much rain. This field got, didn't get enough. This one over here, just right. What do they say? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. If you understand Hopi, Bear Clan is chief, huh? Right. Okay, what does a bear do when he comes in a new territory? He goes up to a tree and he goes, rawr, and he scratches the tree, right? Right. Okay, now I'm going to show you something. Everything we buy today for the money has got that scratch on it. That's right. And one day that thing's going to scratch the people and that's going to bring people together because some people ain't going to want to get scratched. And it's going to be run by the women because in the old Cherokee way, there, there was a fort cheating the Cherokee and the women, they took the knife and they cut their hair. And today you're going to see a lot of women with real short hair. We already do. Ah, now, signs. Speaking of signs, how okay. do you see things Now what coming? the women did was they surrounded that fort and for seven days in seven shifts, they screamed. And the guys had guns, and they go, what are they doing? Well, they're screaming. And the guys, after seven days, they dropped the guns, and the fort was abandoned. Because when a woman screams, them gals can break a glass at 50 feet with her voice. Yeah. Guys, we can't handle them screamers. And so, we was told a woman would scream. And what happened? Mount Helen exploded, and she screamed, didn't she? What right. came out of Mount Helen? A lot of ash. Broken glass, silica. That's right. That's what happens when you break a glass. And so who's chief of the Cherokee Nation today in Oklahoma? Wilma Mankiller. Wilma Mankiller. And everybody thinks a Cherokee is a Chrysler product driving down the road. It's just another you man see? killer. <laughs> and so if a truck hits you, that's a man killer. So in the old way, so the guys wouldn't have no stress, the guys could go have fun. The women handled the bartering and the trading. And the women owned the property. There was a divorce and she couldn't hack the guy no more. She just put it, her things out on the front porch and he'd pick them up and go his way. Because a man can always build another house, you know. Now, do you see that happening uh, in the, the experience of, of a multicultural community? Well, look at what's happening. You see all these women today raising little kids, mm -hmm. women with all their hair cut off, with a couple of little kids and they're dropping them off at a daycare center. Dressed they don't have no suit. tribe. Right. If you got a tribe, everybody spanks your kid or everybody hugs your kid. Everybody loves your kid. And everybody cares for everybody. You don't have that today. You've got, you've got to split, see? Mm -hmm. What other barriers do you see that present themselves to a multicultural community? I know you've got well some a long time ago in England they built a great big boat and the captain said this boat is unsinkable and a woman passenger said well that's like slapping the creator in the face and so 
they found out later that that's ego. And the psychiatrists, they say, well, that's the tip of an iceberg. The id, they call it. The id is the tip. So that Titanic went out, hit the tip of an iceberg, and sank. But let's say, for example, there was some folks on that boat who didn't buy into that and didn't buy into that unsinkable stuff. Mm -hmm. So they went over and they got life jackets after they put their stuff away and they had a lifeboat drill and they sat in one of the lifeboats and they said uh, okay uh, this is how we put the life jacket on and uh, uh, how do we lower it into the water and are we going to need drinking water are we going to need blankets and what do we do once we're in the ocean and what direction do we go and they discussed these things among themselves other passengers let's say walked over and said what are you people doing well, we're having a lifeboat drill. Well, you people are nuts, you see. Now, I'm getting new aged in my old age. You know, we got chocolate covered chakras, vanilla karmas, higher cells, <laughs> lower cells, unicorns. All these things are delightful because <laughs> kids are trying different names. Right. And they're like the boat people because some people are stuck in one way, one thought, you see. And others recognize that that's not working. No, we're growing. Objects tell space where to bend. Space bends for objects. E equals mc squared. Mm -hmm. But it's round. Okay, it's <laughs> earth, man, creator. E equals mc. Man trying to be like creator and shoves earth over here. Now with the Indian blood, we're bringing back earth back into the circle. So that's where you're going to make it. See, because E equals mc. Okay, so right. the people come over. Got some of that light hit me there. Okay, now, the people come over to the boat and they said, uh, what are you people doing? Well, we're having a lifeboat drill. Well, you people are crazy. This ship is unsinkable. And so what they did was uh, they went down and they told the captain, there's some nuts up there having a lifeboat drill. And so the captain had uh, bigger parties and, and a longer, happier hour and, uh, and put on more shows and, and put more fear into the people so they wouldn't buy into that into that, those lifeboat mm -hmm. people. But the people on the lifeboat, every day they'd have a 20-minute lifeboat drill. And one day while they were having a lifeboat drill, let's say an elderly gentleman fell down the gangway. And he fell down them stairs and he gashed his leg and he laid down there on that bottom deck and he was bleeding. And them people jumped out of that lifeboat and they run down that gangway and they helped the old boy. And they, one gal tore her dress and made a bandage. They got him something to drink. They talked to him and they made him comfortable. And they sent him love and healing energy. Because we're finding we have that. Los curanderos lo sabía. You know, the, the, the medicine they knew this long ago. Right. So what? And one day, I'll, I'll finish this quick. Okay. And one day, because these lifeboat people did little acts of kindness all over the boat. And one day some of the other passengers came over and they said, uh, excuse us, could you show us what you've learned? Oh, why well, certainly. And so they, uh, they got into another lifeboat with one of the original lifeboat people and they said, well now you're going to need some drinking water, you're going to need some blankets. And pretty soon more passengers got into other lifeboats and one day, even the captain was seen sitting in a lifeboat going, uh, <clears throat> well, now, uh, this is how you lower it into the water and so on. Now, the moral of that little story is that we may yet have a chance to save the ship. Our ship is our Mother Earth. The only reason that we exist, may I hold this up? We've got just a couple of minutes left, really, so... Okay, please, the only reason that we exist as human beings is the fact that this Earth, happens to have a topsoil and the fact that it rains. All the rest is talk. We eat. And Bruce, that's how we're going to make it. Mm -hmm. We've got to take care of her. Because this is the snow eagle. She has snow on top of the head and snow on the tail. And this country took the snow eagle. It has the snow on top of the head and the snow on the tail. And so this land is the great turtle island. And the head of the turtle is South America. The neck is, Baja, is uh, Mexico and Central America. One leg of the turtle is Baja California, and the other leg of the turtle is Florida. And Arizona is the heart of the great turtle island. And when you write the word heart in an unbroken circle, it spells earth. That's right. And so we make a return. 
Willie, I'd like to thank you for being on the show this evening. Mm -hmm. And it's been a real enjoyable time having you. And I think all the people that have been listening can really take heart to what you've been saying and, and apply those that principle, especially of the lifeboat, in helping one another. Thank you. Again, your book, uh, the newest one is Outdoor Survival Handbook for Kids. Yeah. And, and you can get it in just show. about any bookstore. And we have an 800 number. Yes, if I'll um, give it to you. For it's 1-800-447-9945. Right. If anybody like it, because I wrote it for my grandkids. And um, I figured maybe some other kids could use it, too. And sure. uh, it's got a lot of tips because it had a lot of things. It's got about the killer bees. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a father and daughter out by Bullhead City two years ago, got stuck in the sand. They died. A man ate a poison plant, and he died. And in there I use an old Cherokee test that the medicine people use for testing plants. I know 16 people that died eating poison water hemlock, all thinking it was wild carrot. Uh, two tough. girls got out, one lost her sheep because yeah. I show an old trick how you can save, how mm -hmm. you can prevent frostbite. And, and that's so, all contained in here. Again, Willie. Thank you. Thanks so much for being on the show. I was going to show you a river picture real quick. We're just about out of time. Uh, can I hold it up? Sure. The river in life is the same. And if you don't paddle, you head to Boulder. Right. And these people ain't paddling, and I'm in the back looking like I need cooperation. Mm -hmm. And that's white water. Again, thanks for watching the show. This has been One World. If you've got any comments or questions, please write us at One World, care of P.O. Box 32035, Phoenix, Arizona 85064-2035. I'm Bruce Benefiel, also known as Zendor. Thanks again for watching. Tune in next week. Namaste.